We're very excited to have you all here for the panel on taking your arts practice online. Um, I know each of you have had uh, different but very valuable and interesting experiences with being artists on the internet uh, both before COVID in the before times uh, and recently. I, I know some of you have really ramped up what you're doing. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Liz briefly to uh, take over the session, but first I'd like to introduce folks to Liz. So Liz Clark, also known as Hida Basile, uh, is a Scarborough-born multidiscipline creative. Uh, her humble origins in the arts stem from writing stories in her childhood, sparking a passion that later developed into pursuing spoken word poetry. Uh, last year, Liz won the OG 500, which is House of Paints annual poetry slam. It's a pretty big title in Ottawa. Um, and for those who don't know, Hida Basile is representative of Elizabeth spelled backwards. Um, Liz has released several singles that premiered in her debut on mixtape, The Humanities. Um, and she has also been a CBC Trailblazer Award winner. Um, Hida Basilia is taking charge to set an example and lead the next generation of young creatives to live in the full potential and authenticity of their creative purpose. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Liz and she'll introduce each of our panelists. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Veronica. I really appreciate that intro. Thank you for having me today. As Veronica said, my name is Liz Clark. Welcome to House of Paint 2020 Knowledge Conference. Super excited for this. So we wanna thank the team at House of Paint for putting this conference on. We're grateful for this team, their diligence, their flexibility, resourcefulness, and their commitment to the creative community and all of us hip hop heads out here, right? So before we start it, uh, start it off, I, I think it's absolutely necessary that we acknowledge the land that we are occupying as we come together today to share wisdom and knowledge. We must first thank and show our gratitude for the land and the gifts um, it continues to give us. So I hope as creatives that um, we can live our lives getting to share our gifts with others and to the land. I would like to thank the Algonquin Anishinaabe people, the original caretakers of the land of Turtle Island, and we show our gratitude and express our solidarity with the plight of Indigenous people on this land and all over. So with Thanksgiving in mind, I'd like to finish by referring to the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving address by saying, and now our minds are one. So I want to thank all the creators that we have joining me here on this panel. We got some heavy hitters with us today. So um, before I tell you about them, I'm just going to tell you a bit about myself uh, going off of what Veronica already said. Um, I do a lot of content creation. So I do videography, photography, graphic design, and play piano. I'm also a child and, child and youth care practitioner as well. And I like to integrate working with youth into what I do and getting youth to really um, tap into their potential creatively. And I started a business called Freedex that hires creatives to collaborate and work on paid projects. But my focus now is on innovating how we participate in community creatively so voila, that brings me right here with you all right now. It's a big topic about how we are to create creatively now and post online and share our work with people in new ways. So we're gathered to talk with each other, creative to creative, artist to artist, however you identify, and how we've been able to take our arts practice online, right? So for many of us, we've relied heavily on live and on get, and doing in-person gigs to get by. To be frank, that's really kind of off the table, right? So today we're going to really talk about how we've had to pivot. So without further ado, I would like to get to know uh, who we got on this panelist. And I have all of your bios here right before me, and I'm super excited um, for you all to, um, for the audience to get to know who you are. I'm coming from, from hip hop, this art form. I believe in storytelling and st telling our own story. So I do have your bias, but I would love to hear it right from your mouth for if y'all could tell us exactly who you are for a bit, because I think that would give us exactly a, a, a scope of what you bring to the table. So um, we got, I'm going to introduce you though, because we need to know who we're, who, we're, who we're dealing with right now. So we got Rise from the, the trio, Scylla and Rise. Rise, can you give us a little, a little <laughs> hand? A little hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> we got Alea De Castro. We got a dancer here. Alea, can you give us a little? Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
There you go. We got Diamond Nils. Can you give us a little? What up, what up? EO Dub. Oh, Vice VZ. Oh, I see what's going on. We got Corey James. Great in the building. Yep. We got, I like that. Nice and, nice and simple. All right. Rise, would you be able to kick it off for us and tell us a bit about yourself? Tell us a bit about your story. Sure. So, um, I'm a producer, DJ, dancer, musician, and I've uh, been doing it for quite a while. I'm 46. I started producing records when I was 16, so I've been in it for a minute. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, blessed to be a guest at House of Paint several times. Um, and, yeah, just excited to talk about what's going on. It's, a, it's definitely a sea change. I mean, there's been a lot of changes in the industry in the last 30 years, but this is the biggest one I've seen, for sure. For sure, for sure. I definitely agree. Thank you for sharing. Up next, Alea, if you could tell us a bit about yourself. What's up, guys? Uh, thank you for having me on this dope panel. Um, I am 28 years old. I've been dancing for over almost 15 years now. I started in the studio world, ballet, jazz, contemporary, and then I started getting into other street dance styles, hip hop, walking, house, um, social dancing. I perform, I choreograph. Um, we, I have a dance company called Move Ottawa Dance with my partner who's just beside me here. I'm actually in the, um, the arts court right now, as you can see. <laughs> we have our rehearsal uh, before and after all this. Um, we are, myself and my partner, uh, with our dance company, we host a lot of dance battles in the city. We do a lot of community projects, um, workshops, school stuff. Um, and I'm also a registered nurse and I just finished my shift this morning. <laughs> wow. Round of applause. Thank you. Uh, up next, Diamond Nils. Yes. What up? What up? Thank y'all for having me. Uh, my name is Dama. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm a rapper, producer, uh, and DJ. Um, I've been doing it for a long time as well. Uh, basically, I'm a part of End of the Week, uh, and we've been doing a EO Beats Challenge uh, weekly. So today is the day that we're doing uh, one of the semifinals. Uh, I've been rapping for a long time. I have a production company in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, with my man That Boy Craig, where we uh, basically throw. Well, before COVID, we were throwing events and DJing parties and. Uh, doing shows and stuff like that, but you know we had to flip it, so here we are. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Last but not least, we got Corey. Corey, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, I changed my name, by the way, Diamond Nils. Is went from ill spoken to to Corey James Gray. Uh, gotcha. I'm a, yeah, yeah. I'm an MC uh, and a rapper. It depends on what day you catch me on. Uh, <laughs> producer, DJ. Uh, event host, event curator, uh, U.S. cultural ambassador, and uh, I work with youth, I work with seniors, and I am the uh, creator and, and, and one of the co-founders of Freestyle Mondays, which is in its 19th year. Uh, we're right behind, we're like EO Dub's little, little brother, you know, we're, we're, we're right behind them for 20 years, and uh, it's, in, it's in three different countries, in Strasbourg, France, uh, Czech Republic, and in, uh, Prague and the Czech Republic and in New York City. And yeah, yeah right. and I've, been, I've been rapping for a minute. Ooh. Uh, I dig it. Jeez, depending on which day though, you know, which day depending, we catch you yeah, on. Yeah, just, yeah you I, get, I get that. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So right off the bat, I want to know about um, your experience transitioning um, from the, the live in-person gigs that we were talking about to this online world. Um, what's been working for you? So Corey, if you can tell us a bit about that transition and about streaming Freestyle Mondays and kind of the strides that you've taken with that endeavor. You said 19 years now. Now you've got to pivot. If you could tell us a bit about that. Uh, the, pivot, the pivot was a, it was a, it was a difficult learning curve at first uh, because I didn't want to do it as just a, a, a regular, um, just like a, a, I just didn't want to do a regular. I wanted to, to make it a production of sorts uh, because the, the actual show is a production of sorts, you know? Uh, so the, the learning curve, it, it took, it, it was a lot of hours in a day, but the, the dopest part was being able to connect with fam of, of, of ours from around the world that had been there, you know, cause 19 years is, is, is a long time. So it's like, people will come by, 
live in New York for five years or something and skip, whether it's on the other side of the country, whether it's in Europe. So it's really dope to have, to be able to connect and give them that show uh, live, you know, to have them involved, to have them compete even, you know, uh, so, so, so that's been dope. So the, the biggest part for me is, has been, you know, the, the, the extension still, still, still being able to, to, to have that connection from, you know, from far away. Cause COVID kind of put us in our little shells, you know, in mm -hmm. our little bubbles, you know, so yeah. it's, it's good to, to let the bubbles touch, you know, the bubbles touch and it kind of opens up like that. I like that. I like that. You said that. Yeah. That isolation is definitely impacting our communities. Um, up next, Alea, if you can um, tell us what this 2020 transition has been like, this pivot, how have you had to course correct with Move Ottawa as well? You know, it's been a really interesting time um, for Move Ottawa and for myself away from the arts because um, I'm also a nurse. So artistically speaking, all of our gigs were canceled. Street dance is a social uh, event. It's a social gathering, regardless if it comes to dance classes, um, being in schools, our community battles, all canceled because of COVID. So for a while, we really had nothing going on. Um, but to tie in with my nursing, I work at the Ottawa Hospital. We really wanted to give back um, to our community and do something for free and try to kind of bring up morale. So we did some free dance classes through the Ottawa Hospital Fund to raise um, money for the hospital and people who are really affected by it um, who are admitted to the hospital. So we did some online classes at first, which gained a lot of uh, media attention, which is really great um, for us overall. So we had CBC and CTV um, interviewing us from our house. And then um, we did receive a grant to the Arts Network Ottawa in the midst of all of this. So super grateful for that, but we had to adjust because our, our project initially was uh, Third Friday. So Third Fridays was a monthly street dance battle um, that we had for our community. It was free, it was held at the city of Ottawa, or sorry, it was held at um, um, City Hall. And uh, we just had the community come every month. We had DJs, we had MCs, we had kids, anybody of uh, all backgrounds come. It was really dope. And it was just something to look forward to. But because of COVID, again, it had to be um, stopped. So we adjusted our project. We have free online DJing for two of our youth for six months. So we have a couple DJs. Actually, we have quite a few DJs. Rise is one of them, too, uh, on board. Um, we have interviews with uh, key street dance players or people who have influenced the street dance scene in the Ottawa community. Uh, we're doing that through our I, uh, IG Live. And we also are doing free mini dance lessons on our YouTube. So we really had to make everything virtual and had to adjust. But in terms of moving forward eventually, we want it to be like starting fresh. So we wanted to set the foundation and then set the tone. So then when in-person battles, classes, whatever come back, we're able to you know, know that we were able to um, provide knowledge and skills for people who are not familiar with dancing or youth or anybody who is, you know, in oh, I think it cut out there. Oh, oh, oh we lost audio on you. <laughs> Zoom be doing that sometimes. No. You know what? We'll pivot. Dominoes. Well, no worries. We'll come back to you. That's Zoom. Dominoes, if you could take it out for us um, and tell us a bit about your transition online and the um, challenge. Well, basically, when COVID first started, uh, for, for me, that whole situation really went left when they canceled South by Southwest which for me every year is the biggest bag. It's like, it's, inc it's, I was so mad. But then again, after they canceled South by, that's when I was like, all right, we'll then cancel everything. <laughs> so uh, I went as an artist, I went into an incubation phase of like, I fully understood immediately that this is time that I'm gifted and that all artists are gifted to just kind of take that chill. Like we're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like shit is, sh things will figure themselves out. And um, 
now is the time to do all those things that I couldn't do before because I was always traveling, running around, worrying about all these monetary things. I'm like, let me work on this project that I've been putting off. So I immediately went into that, and that was fine. I had no 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 problem with not doing live shows and nothing like that. Then vice versa, the founder of EO Dub passed away on April 17th. And uh, then everything, we, we at EO Dub who like, you know, we're all close, but we weren't working on stuff together at that point. You know, some people were, some people weren't, but it wasn't like a collective thing at that point. Uh, the week before we had our first virtual open mic and Vice was there. And uh, the next week he wanted, he wanted to keep doing it weekly. And so we decided that Sunday to do his memorial service. And it was you know, all the, I think it's like 13 to 15 chapters of EO Dub worldwide. Every chapter in the world was in there. We had uh, Uganda, China, France, London, uh, uh, Montreal, all of that in there. And uh, the Zoom, you know, it was a lot of tears. It was a lot of emotions. It was a lot of, you know, that. And then we started just drinking and then when the new york team passed out that's when like the london and france team was coming in uh and then we just continued so it was the longest running zoom ever it's still running <laughs> like it's like that zoom so then we never left like we just continued we we did it for the 121 hours which is a significant number for vice uh, of just memorial, just a Zoom, just a place where we can be to talk to our friends and just be and think about Vice and all of that. But then it turned into like, you know, what Vice would really want is for us to continue this and create content for this and to keep the EO Dub flag waving and do really cool stuff in here. So my brother Souls hit me up like, yo, one of the things, y'all, because we were just figuring things out. It was the open mic. It was MC Challenge. It was some cooking shows. It was yoga. It was a bunch of different things. And my boy hit me up like, yo, we should do a beat competition. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. So we figured out, me, him, and Nunzio figured out the parameters of it, which is uh, we send the producers three different samples, a song sample, a movie clip, and a weird sound, and they have to use all three in a beat. And... Uh, you know, the whole judging thing we kind of figured out in the first show. But then I created the skate storage character the night before the first show because I, 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 my eyes was puffy and I didn't want to do a promo video without shades. And I was like, all right, let me just be Scott Storch and put on the piano and all of that. And so now we've been doing it weekly uh, for about three months now. And we're already in the semifinals. Um, we got a bunch of really dope producers, dope judging, and it's uh, such a unique beat competition because of the sample aspect and because of the feedback aspect and because we talk to the producers about what they use, what their process was and stuff like that. It's not just like play your beats and keep it moving, you know, like we really talk uh, for two hours every week about music, which is what we could talk about for 12 hours a day you know what i'm saying it's our favorite thing so it's been amazing and then you know we got a whole lot of other content on eo dub including free o dub which is a freestyle segment and uh the open mic and industry advice stuff like that so it's become like a hip-hop interactive television network which um we're all kind of trying to figure out how to keep this going when things turn back to normal and how to like not have to return to any kind of like regular job when we can just do this you know yeah wow that is a that is a a pivot that you really you all came together and and took it in a new direction and the memorializing of uh, of someone that's dear to you all and how it's turned into something a project like that you all get to collaborate on and connect i really love the how like what you just said um Thank you. Yeah. Jeez. So, oh, one second. Alea, can we hear you now? I think so. Can you there hear me? We go. Yes. Yeah, all right. Just checking. All right. So, Rise, we want to hear from you. What have you had to do to embrace this transition and in service of <laughs> your arts practice? How have you had to pivot? Yeah. You know, I remember... Uh, like 91 when email was really becoming a thing you know and i was like email come on 
email. Who's going to get one of those things, you know? And then pretty much every wave of technology that's come on, I'm always the late adopter. So it's just, I find it really hard to, uh, to jump into these new things, partly because, you know, I think your, your artistic practice as an artist is a sacred thing that you, you know, you spent your whole life learning how to do. And, um, you know, the thought that you have to rewire your whole artistic practice every time somebody in Silicon Valley comes up with a new idea for the, the next gimmicky platform is uh, is really offensive to me, you know? So, um, yeah, so I, I always kind of push back at first. I find it really hard to embrace them, but I have been doing my best to uh, to keep up with the times, as it were. And uh, so, you know, I, I feel like there's there's different things. Like when, for my band, we were performing a lot of festivals and traveling and playing a lot. Uh, so the band is called Sila and Rise, and it's two Inuit women who do throat singing, uh, Inuit throat singing, and myself playing percussion. And so, you know, the, it's a trio. It's a real. It's like a. It's like a punk trio. You know, like we just we we play live. It's very much centered on the live experience. And so, initially, people were asking us to to do live shows and. You know, like when you when you do play a live show, there's you know there's sound text, there's lighting text, there's uh, you know there's wardrobe issues, there's there's the monitor PA, there's the the lighting, you know, there's the the camera, there's like so many different aspects of it that you know I was initially feeling like it really is not very fair for artists to have to take all this stuff on, you know, and I kept having this you know entitlement mentality of like, well, you know, I'm an artist, I should I should need to do this, but after a while, I think I just kind of got over it and I just started reading a lot about lighting and about camera work and you know i'm fortunate that the the audio portion you know i've got pretty much uh under control so really i started refusing doing the live things and focusing on producing shows um so you know basically producing recorded pre-recorded material and then submitting it to festivals or presenters whoever wanted to to show us and then um you know that way i could keep kind of some creative control so you know i got a really good green screen and i got you know five lights set up and you know and we really approach it like we're producing a piece of uh, audiovisual content every time um and I, f I feel like that's really helped helped us to kind of reclaim our image and you know we're able to mess with the back and i know a lot of people are doing it in different ways there's so many different platforms that you can use to do it initially i i came up with this super uh macgyver like ghetto way of uh getting around it i bought a projector and i would literally have like um i would pre-record the show and edit the video and then project it and i would film the projection with a wire in to uh for the audio so it was like this ghetto workaround for having to use the the technological aspect but Basically, the, the, the festivals now and all the presenters, the bigger presenters all have a way that you can just send them video and they'll broadcast it through to all their platforms. So, you know, basically, that's that's the way that I've, I've uh, approached it. And, you know, same with my personal, uh, like my beat making and, uh, and DJing. And I'm, I'm just trying to embrace the very short, um, you know, Instagram world. So, yeah, I mean, I... I'm excited to hear what you guys are doing because I don't feel like I'm on top of my game completely, honestly. <laughs> honestly, it sounds like you're making do with what you got. I love that you touched on that you had to go and purchase equipment because I know during this pivot, a lot of us have now have to go acquire materials that yeah. make it possible to come online. Um, mm -hmm. so that brings me to kind of integrating that to my next question about um, streaming streams of income and kind of like, First, I want to ask about the kind of cost that you have to have had to inquire about taking your arts practice online. I know, right, you just talked about that, but if there's anyone who's uh, had to and had to kind of pivot with like their, their, their cost structure now that you're online. It, uh, it's been interesting, uh, but I, I wanted to say with um, what Rise was just saying about the show and, you know, it, it being a whole production, it was a learning curve, but on Zoom, we have multiple producers of every show that do spotlighting for the streaming that uh do the like all the things that make it a show that it could be streamed on twitch and youtube and all of that there's a lot of, like when somebody's not there and one of us that's like hosting or you know participating in different ways has to spotlight it's a big annoyance so it's like there's it takes a village to do it but as far as costs for something like what what we do um, at EO Dub, uh, the things that we've had to acquire is headphones with microphones. That's a big deal. So we all have gamer headphones now. We all have the same brand of gamer headphones. Um, 
uh, I set it up because I'm a gamer too. So I was like, oh, I could just use these. And then everybody else was just like, hell yeah, those work really well. Because when you're rapping, talking, whatever on Zoom, and you're just talking into the computer, it's not as good as having a mic. But you also, if you don't want to have a whole mic set up, and then lighting is also important too, because you don't want your show looking, you know what I'm saying, a little uh, half ass. Like you want lights. But. Sometimes you don't need to, like, invest in nothing crazy. You could just take two lamps, put them on two different sides, and you have two points of lighting, and it's nice, you know? So you, you, there's ways around it, too, to make it look nice. It just depends on what look you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to get. Facts. Make it work. Yeah. Corey, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, just to piggyback on, on what Dama said, the, the, the production is I, – I, I happen to, to, to do it on my own. I have like <laughs> when I'm when I'm streaming is literally five screens that I'm looking at, and uh, yeah, and I'm using I'm using uh, which you you probably know about gaming. I, I use OBS to run to run uh, same my Zoom. Yeah, yeah, I, I use OBS. So as you can see, like I got these little things that are even now. Like I don't have my Zoom is just set up like this now, you know. So I I, I run it through OBS and I'm doing like a lot of. There's a lot of things, a lot of a lot of scene switching, a lot of uh, I do. Uh, I've run commercials, uh, I run features. Like one, I do like something called the quarantine minute, where I pick a dope artist and I run a feature for 60 seconds. You know, I tell them if you're gonna rap, rap something dope for 60 seconds. And I do all of our sponsors. I told them to give me a a, a commercial uh, of like promotion with 15 seconds because I want things like this. I don't want to. You know, nobody wants to sit there for. A long time and like oh this is two or three minutes for a commercial break or whatever now nah, everything's like bow 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 uh so just now you know let me pivot into answering your question i was doing all this on a on a on a uh, 2017 macbook pro and when i was running the show my computer my, my battery ended up swelling right so i had to to run the show with ice packs underneath my mac Right. So, so, and now I'm not, I'm not in the U S right now. Um, I'm out of the country. I'm in a, I'm in a country that doesn't have Apple. Right. So I just like this, the season till the next, the season is done for freestyle Mondays. I'm going to start the next season, uh, in October because my, I had to send my Mac to a homie in Brooklyn who brought it to an Apple store. He got it back and he just FedExed it back to me. So, it, it, so what I had to do is like, is, is the universe is amazing. I put like a post out about just needing a hand for, for Freestyle Mondays. And a dude that came in like 2008 was like, hey, let me know if you do any, need anything. I do computers now. I just finished school. You know, I'm like, yes. So he built me a polling system on the back end uh, so that, you know, because I, I run a game show battle so the people can, can vote live. You know, you vote this person, this person, the results come up live and they flip names and everything. And it, it, the whole thing is, is good. Uh, and then he also built me a gaming machine PC that that arrived here. So I have a PC that would have costed me a couple of G's. And he just he you know, he put it together for for just what the cost is and and sent it to me so that. Uh, you know, my Mac is coming, but there's no more of that. Now I have a gaming PC and I am going to use uh, Diamond Nil's idea of the headset with the microphone. I'm going to take that because this setup, this is, this is put, this is actually in my booth that I have to take out and bring over to this setup every time. So I would like to have the head in case I want to dance too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we want you to dance. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's been the main, that, no, no, no. Uh, but that's been the main thing for, 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 for cash. And I mean, we're just, you know, we're looking for sponsors, sponsors, same as probably everybody here, just looking for, for, right. for funding so that we can continue to do this. Uh, as, 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 as Dama said, we can't continue to do this when things are, are, um, I, I don't think things are ever going to be normal again with things when people start heading out to gigs and things i want to still be able to spark it up here and be like bow here's the show you know and then go about my business pay everybody put some dough in my pocket and go swimming i like that i like that you're talking about money now because that's where we talk to creatives out here that's the questions they want to know that's that's what they want to know about how we're making money in this season 
So I really want to talk about uh, streams of income, how we're bringing in some funds. I know for me, I am not working any nine to five because I decided that I want to commit to my art form. Whatever happens, happens. I'm giving it up to the divine to leave me there. So I'm really trying to build. I'm really trying to build my creative network right now. So I want to talk about some some of the streams of income. I know um, personally, I'm doing a monthly subscription model on Patreon. I don't know if anyone here is on Patreon doing any type of monthly subscription to get passive income, doing workshops, commission work, selling not selling merch yet, but soon. I don't know if any of you are selling merch, um, but I like that you mentioned grants and sponsorships and um, some of you are talking about you have competitions. Um, so I really want to get a sense of kind of where you're bringing in, uh, like what's been best for you to bring in some streams of income and kind of what would you recommend? Oh, no, Me? No. Oh. oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, artistically speaking, um, like I said, we received the grants. So we were really fortunate to be able to um, do our project, I mean, virtually, but um, still be able to receive the grant. So we were able to buy equipment. So just to touch upon what we were just speaking of, we bought tons of equipment for our DJ use um, and we were able to buy equipment for ourselves um, through the grant as well. So it's not just for this project, but for anything upcoming, if we're still gonna continue stuff um, virtually, if it's gonna be online classes, you know, we'll have good quality videos posted. Um, we have lighting, we have a new camera, we have a new laptop. So all that um, was paid through the grant. So we were super, super grateful for that. Um, we have little gigs here and there. I mean, myself specifically, we just did a gig with the group swing. So we're doing a performance. So it's it's hard to do performances online because it's not the same feeling. So um, we haven't been offered too, too many things. Um, Arnaldo has been doing some stuff um, with B-Boyism, but for myself, we just had that gig uh, last weekend. So that was nice and it was nice to perform again and it was a little bit of income. But again, it's not regular because what we do is very hand in hand with other uh, artistic practices. Like if we're doing like backup dancing or like, you know, doing a like a warm up for a, another artist if there's not that opportunity for them most likely there's not for us because the, a dancer can only dance for so long a street dancer can only dance for so long on a stage by themselves before it gets boring or we get exhausted <laughs> um but again i'm a nurse so i'm lucky that i do have um that steady income uh i mean it's stressful regardless but i i can't say no to it especially in times like this because like you gotta pay the bills. <laughs> I feel that. I get that. Uh, anybody else want to touch on the streams that have been doing them well, whether it's having a, a steady income or relying on your practice? I'll hop in on that. Um, I suggest anybody who is a vocalist or a rapper to try to dive into voiceovers. Just try to dive into voiceovers. Like if you, poetry, whatever, if you are on stage and you're using your voice, dive into voice because you're way ahead of the game. I've been doing voiceovers now, I think for like a year and a half, two years, uh, because I've been doing, I, I've done licensing for a while. That as well, uh, sync and licensing. I've been in the sync licensing game for, for a very long time. And for, for people who, for people uh, like us, who, who, are, who are, you know, for the, for the, for the MCs and poets here, uh, it's to go and write it, it, it basically you can go in and do something in 25 minutes that would take other folks a couple of hours and that to them is like ching ching and so that to you is ching ching so that uh my, my stream of income mainly right now is is coming from um sync licensing uh and and uh in 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 voiceovers and the thing is once if you find the right sound houses for sync and licensing and they need something you go and write something whether whether they use it or not it's still write and record it and it's and it, it doesn't have to be crazy write and record it in an hour and it's still anywhere from three to five hundred dollars just for the demo fee just for the demo fee and then after that if it gets picked up you're looking at five to to i mean eighty thousand dollars for for so for a placement you know what i mean but that's like that's the high end but it's usually around like 10 or 15 you know but that's something that like i would say if you're if you're a vocalist look into it go online find a script and make a fake demo that's step one you would say yeah, having a demo 
that, that's the, yeah, that's what I did. I made a, I made a, I went and downloaded a PDF. Uh, my homie made some, some, some music and I, I, I read commercials that were already like already out. You know? Wow. I'm going to have to yeah. pick that up right there. That's a really good uh, tip right there. I've been looking And it's, and it's hot it. right now because you, yeah. can't, you can't, a lot of, a lot of the, uh, I have an agent now, but uh, a lot of the, the, the companies are looking for, for voice because people can't go into, um, to auditions. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is, everything is online. So it's now, it's right now, right now, right now. Right now. Wow. That's a really good point about using, you know, this time to really maximize what people are looking for. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that tip. I'm going to put that in my back pocket right there myself. Um, so I want to, I want to talk about community a bit because um, you all have been talking about variously how community has impacted you putting out a post and someone replying and there you have your need met. I'm kind of curious about um, how do you see the hip hop community strengthening in these times online, you know, hip hop, we're, we're out there dancing on the floor, we're playing music live, everyone's engaging, enjoying a good time, but now we gotta bring that kind of, um, gotta bring that online. So how you, you see the next generation um, being impacted by us taking our hip hop online fully? Does anybody have any type of like predictions or seeing where that could go, knowing that that's gonna be, what we're gonna be on relying on for a bit longer? How do you see it impacting future generations of hip hop? I see an integration happening between um, internet and live. Like uh, recently we did uh, one of our open mics at EO Dub, but we did it at a bar that our homegirl owns in bed where the vice versa's mural is. And uh, it's called Tatanka's Tincture Bar. And we were all there chilling, but we also, so we're hosting the open mic, like live potting, you know what I'm saying? So when I saw that happening, and I know that like there's a lot of podcasts that do that, like Joe Budden podcast sells tickets for you to come and watch them live pod. So I feel like something like a beat challenge or the open mic or whatever can be basically simulcast where it's uh, uh, happening live and there's a group of people that's there, but there's also groups of people that's watching it online and interacting with it online. So uh, some kind of integration of the two, because most things music industry wise have been starting on the Internet before COVID. You know what I'm saying? Like artists that were uh, blowing up or whatever was off SoundCloud, Bandcamp, things like that. So this isn't really much of a difference. People are at home. TikTok is another one that's like really like blowing up songs and stuff like that. Like t TikTok is crazy. TikTok is crazy. So I definitely uh, I definitely see the, the integration of the two when things start leveling out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like that you, you mentioned that. Does anybody else have a, a point to go off of that or? Um, yeah, definitely TikTok. Like the use even before COVID was all over that, is still all over that. Um, and I think that a lot of online dance classes is going to be the future. I'm not 100% like invested in that just yet but i might have to if i want to continue teaching maybe like online privates that sort of thing in regards to performing um i think it's just going to be like if there's an opportunity to do that i don't think creating anything and then putting it out there and then trying to sell tickets would be an option at least for me uh and move ottawa maybe for like other theater groups but i mean that's in a different that's a different direction i think it's gonna be challenging in all honesty, for the hip hop community to, uh, especially in the street dance and hip hop dance, to um, recover from this easily. You know, like if I'm being perfectly honest, I know a lot of street dancers are really struggling because they're not being booked for anything, to perform with anybody, um, to teach. If you're teaching, you're teaching online. And when winter comes, you can't be teaching indoors, right? So, not to be the pessimistic one, but that's just, I see that as the reality of what it is in the near future yeah. moving forward from that near future like later on to 2021 i think that it will recover in a one way or another but i think it's going to take a while yeah i hear that for sure for sure rise i want to hear about um your experience on kind of dealing with well, for me I, i'll personally say that i miss being clapped for i i'm going to be really honest i miss yeah. the validation of being 
right. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> Asking you, know, you really shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> right? I miss being on stage. I miss the energy being around people and like, and, and feeling that connection with a crowd. So I'm wondering, yeah. how has that, where are you finding the validation now? Um, is, is, it, is, is online, like the way people are engaging with you online sufficing? Is it satisfying? Yeah, I mean, it's not even it's not even close. It's not even, you know, there's there's no relationship between those two scenarios. So I think, you know, if anything, you know, what's been keeping me and a lot of the artists that I know who are really devoted to it is just that that love that they have that connection to the art form. But in terms of community, like to, to your original question that. You know, I, I haven't met any new, like normally I'm meeting artists all the time and we're collaborating and creating all these beautiful things and that hasn't really happened for me. So it's good to hear like Dama's story about, you know, how she's she's bringing all these people together. But I guess I, I just need to work harder at my tech game to, to figure that all out because... Um, yeah, I really like we were doing my partner Tangent and I were house dancers. And so we were doing an event every month where we had a different DJ and a different dancer guest dancer every every month. Alea and Arnaldo have been our guests, you know, but we've had, you know, a lot of, you know, some great American dancers have come up here. And, you know, we, every every month, it was an opportunity for, you know, 100 people to be in the same room with all these amazing artists from around the world that were sharing their art. And so you know, I really miss it, too. Mm, yeah. I I just got to say real quick that Zoom is really the answer to that. It's not exactly uh, it, but it very much comes close. So when we perform, we have everybody in the Zoom. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's in the Zoom, and then I'm as the host. I'm like, yo, come off mute and give it up for blah, blah, blah. And then you hear, yeah, and then you hear all the claps and everybody bugging. And it does, you know, it's not, it's like, it's it's like it's not the all the way high of having everybody in the room, but it does suffice for what you're what you're looking for at that moment. Like I did a live show with somebody and it was uh, through a different website, not Zoom. And basically where they're watching me on Twitch and they're reacting in the comments. And I didn't feel that energy. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not reading the Twitch comments. I'm not like look, looking at comments while I'm performing. But if you're in the Zoom and you're looking at it in, uh, well, what's it called? The gallery view. And you see people bobbing their heads. You see people reacting. You see people making faces. It gives you that energy. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to just doing it. And now you're looking at yourself. And then you look at fire emojis in the comments. It's like, all right, cool. But it's not the same thing, you know? So Zoom... Zoom suffices for you need y'all 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 all should pull up to EO Dub so y'all can feel that uh and and freestyle Mondays when it comes back so you can feel that that vibe that uh, energy. Honestly, I'm definitely gonna have to. I like the sound of that. I'll be out here, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just to piggyback on what what both Rise and Dama said, uh, I I did I think may, maybe two maybe two I think just one. DJ set on IG after the whole, you know, after uh, uh, D nice the whole movement, and and I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Let me just let me just try it. Hated it, hated it, couldn't do it. I was like, I I can't because I'm not gonna sit there and read the. I'm trying to DJ. I'm trying to catch a vibe. The only way I did do it twice, and the only way I could get through the second set was my two year old was on our our um our veranda dancing while I had like a little whatever. My two-year-old was in, yeah. So that's how it got me over. But then I, I've done a few uh, private Zoom parties. That's cool. When you can actually see folks, you know, especially, especially if, you're, if you're, I mean, I guess if you're just creating and you want some type of reaction, you know, but especially DJing, you want to know if this track is, is hitting or not because you can't, you know what I mean? Or, or to get out of it, that's part of, the, the, the dopeness of DJing and trying to move the crowd and catch your energy and take people places is that sometimes you'll try something that doesn't work and it's like, all right, well now we'll, let me let me let me pivot out of this. But you don't know that it's not working because you're not looking at the little screen, you know? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Word. very interesting. Um a question I'm asking now is about um kind of the business aspect that comes to our practice as artists. And it's definitely amplified right now 
um, for having to be on the ball about what we're how we're catering to our audiences. In the workshop that I teach right now, I'm teaching about the creative journey and, and kind of the aspects we need to focus on to really amplify our practice. And that comes down to a lot of marketing. It comes down to a lot of the nitty gritty behind the scenes. So I'm wondering if um, any of you have any tips uh, kind of like the back end of um, making this all happen, whether it's creating a business plan, project planning, marketing plans, hiring people, if you had to get softwares and automation to make things just like a little easier, if you can share, if each of you can share some tips. I find being um, active enough on social media has really kept our community and um, our clientele um, involved with what we're doing to show that we're still, you know, active either through our performances or, um, you know, throwing old pictures on there just to engage with other people um, to make them still feel like we're we're going through what they're going through. So there's, there's that human side of us still, but we're still trying to do things um, on our side. So really uh, using social media to our full advantage um, and still trying to post actively because people notice those things. You know, if you, ha if you haven't posted in like, four months we're like oh they're they're dead <laughs> you know like they're not doing anything and it's <laughs> i mean i don't i'm not saying that you need to like confine yourself just to social media or like put up a front be honest with it right like if you're going through things as a company i i really appreciate when i see that in other companies or other artists who they're like you know i'm going through things but i'm working through it so i appreciate that when i see it in other businesses and, and artists too so um i find it reciprocal for at least from what we're doing very well said. Anybody else in the back end, the business side, any tips that's been working for you? For me, I create project packages, which have been really helping me to break down how I want to release something. I just break it down into pages and make sure I have a um, an idea of how I want to execute. Yeah, same, like having having that idea, having um, doing a lot of research. I watch a lot of YouTube videos on marketing and stuff like that. I would definitely suggest for everybody to uh, get an LLC or an S Corp or some kind of business where you can also, at times like this, get grants and loans for your business and then use that for all of your uh, projects and stuff like that. That's something that's also been been working for me. So, yeah, definitely incorporate that's a good tip right there yeah like incorporate that. cover yourself you know uh copyright whatever like just just cover yourself and know know your your, your publishing rights if it publishing if it's, if, if it's about music you know that's very that's very very important uh that's that's not looked at enough i feel like um people people a lot of people focus on marketing a lot but not you know the stuff that they're putting money towards marketing can just get snatched up <laughs> you know, so so covering yourself is 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 important. And uh, for for me personally, uh, being more vulnerable and letting people uh, assist me, because I I tend to be a uh, a a a one man band. I got the bass drum on one foot. I got the cymbal over here. I'm like doing. You know what I mean? I, it's just what I do. So we had two seasons of Freestyle Monday so far. The first one I I basically I did it on my own, and uh, I had a lot more gray hairs from that. Um, and in the second season, you know, I, I put the, like I said, I put the, I put the post out to people. I, I reached out to some fam and I was like, look, uh, I'm going to come out of pocket. It's not a lot of money going on. Uh, but people were excited. You know, uh, some folks turned down the dough, came in and it's like to have, to, to, to ask, to be able to ask for help, you know, and be like, look, I, and to be able to be like, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing with this. You know, I don't know what I'm doing with this. You know, even though we, we research it and as independent artists, we, 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 we go and try to figure it everything out. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I'll spend like a rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. Uh, Cause I do like to know what's happening, uh, but I might still do the rabbit hole, but then I need to like hop out of the rabbit hole and let somebody else hop in and do the work in the rabbit hole that needs to happen. So I feel like that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's an important, to, important thing to be able to just pass it on, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good point. Uh, I've been needing to ha uh, reach out and lean more on the people around me. And I think that's my next step on really taking it to the next level. So thank you for that. Um, I want to ask, um, I, I want everyone to respond with um, the best 
I'm going to, I don't like to use the word, uh, I'm going to use the word accomplishment because you got to be proud. What's your best accomplishment this year or what's your proud of yourself or what you've been able, the way you've been able to pivot, something that you got off the ground, something that you were able to contribute and felt good about. And I also want you to tie that in, you answer that question and answer um, by giving a piece of, of wisdom or advice to the people that are listening on, on the mo motivation that they may be looking for to make it through this time to know that they can really do that. Anything that you feel like would be valuable to share. So tell us about that, uh, something that you're really proud of yourself for this year and words of wisdom. Rise, if you could start us off. Or? Yeah, let, let somebody else go first. <laughs> <laughs> <Anybody>? <laughs> Uh, uh, I, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Like go ahead. Interrupting you, I'm so sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, you straight, you straight. Uh, um, like I've mentioned from this, the beginning of this conversation, receiving that grant was really a blessing, not just for myself uh, and Move, but our community. So, um, I'm really happy that we received it. Uh, I'm a little sad that it didn't go towards Third Friday's the monthly battle in person, but it went towards, um, you know, building that foundation for our community so then we can come back stronger, or at least that's the goal. Um, in regards to advice, I think it's important just to be honest with yourself. Like if you feel like crap, <laughs> Uh, I mean, like, don't force yourself. I mean, make an effort if you can to make your art what makes you happy, you know, regardless of what um, artistic practice it is, if it's dance, if it's rap, whatever it may be, um, and do that for yourself and continue to do that to make yourself happy. But if you're having an off day, like, you know, it's the middle of a pandemic and the government's going crazy with everything. So, like, be honest with yourself, you know. You don't have to be on 24-7. I think you need to be able to admit if it's, like, if it's a rough day, it's a rough day, you know. And tomorrow is another day. And if you want to make art tomorrow, then go for it and, and do it for yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, that's dope. Um, my accomplishments is basically when it rains, it pours. Uh, when one thing is going great and when you're walking in the energy of like, I'm doing what I love, things just all start coming together. So one of my songs was uh, featured on Netflix. A song from five years ago uh, was on uh, Russian Dolls uh, that I only saw because I looked at my BMI royalty statement, uh, at which I never had nothing on it. And now it does. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, shit. And then I'm done with a project called Gangsta Bitch Love Songs that I'm putting out on Valentine's Day. And okay. it's done. And videos is getting shot for it. And it's like, it's all like some of the best music I've ever made. And then on top of all of that, being able to do the beat challenge, which like everybody is like, oh, you're, you're bringing artists together. And like, I'm doing this for other people. I'm doing this for me. I love doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a straight up selfish good deed you know what i'm saying like i love it so much that like and and it's like even if i'm feeling shitty or i'm not like on a hundred doing what i love puts me on a hundred like even like i like i definitely do believe in in taking time and resting and recuperating and whatever the case is but when i like get myself up and say yo like screw everything like I need to do this because this is what I love and if I don't do it I feel like I'm ungrateful to God for giving me the chance to do it you know what I'm saying and then I do do it I, I feel better and I just like and I'm, I'm walking in that energy and then things start attract like I feel like that is true manifesting you know what I'm saying like when you're just doing the action of what you love and things just start coming to you because the the universe God whatever how, however you believe is like here you go. You're you're grateful for your gifts and your abilities. Here's more blessings bestowed upon you. So let's go. It's a full moon. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get it. That's right. That's right. I feel that. Uh, all right, I hop in. Um, Dama, uh, again, I miss you. It's been too long. We have a lot of parallels in our worlds. Uh, for I real. Have, I've caught a. I've. I've I, I caught a, a nice run of of, of placements uh, this year uh, for for um, for movie trailers, um, and then uh, a short run, a short nice run, and then I've I've 
for voiceovers in 2020, I think I've recorded like 18, 19 commercials, something like that. Eight, 18 commercials. Uh, but mainly, mainly, mainly because I'm the, I ended up to be a, a, the voice of a product. I, I wrote a song for a product and I did some like Eminem, like intro, you know, like you can be the best you can, you know, like that kind of like, you know what I'm talking about? And, and they were like, oh, well, well, can we get the guy that did the song for this? And so I'm the voice of this product and I've done, I've done like just, just with them, I think 12, 11 or 12. Something Let's like that. go. Um, so, so, so that's dope. And then uh, I'm proud of, of, of that's not, yeah, yeah. These are, these are, these are things that I'm, I'm proud of. I'm proud of bringing uh, Freestyle Mondays back online and figuring that out with friends and being vul vulnerable enough to, to, to uh, open up to people and make that happen. Um, uh, I think it's amazing that I get to spend as much time with my son as I do. So COVID, I know you fucking people up and uh, excuse me if I, for the curse, uh, but there, there are a lot of, of, of blessings in that. And the thing that's really like the, the meat and potatoes for me that I'm proud of myself uh, about is uh, the meditation and self, uh, self work and, and, and health and uh, self care is what I'm looking for. The self care, uh, just just you know, like like Aaliyah said, uh, am I saying your name right, Aaliyah? Aaliyah. 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 You know, your boy lost a little bit of weight, but I feel like I could like jump off and be like, wah, wah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the biggest thing for me. And then, and so my biggest piece of advice is not even artistic. It's, uh, it's, it's self-care, it's self-care, self-care, self-care. It's that same thing about like, you can't, you know, put your mask on first before you put it to others. Cause, cause you know, quarantining with people is kind of crazy and not having space away from people is kind of crazy and it's messed up a lot of different relationships uh, that I know. Um, so being able to take care of yourself and sort of dig into things that you haven't actually taken the time to because there's so much energy outside that's like, especially in New York City, it's like energy, you'll have a thought to do something and it's like, do, 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 bye. You know, by a thought to write something by. So to have this kind of silence, this kind of silent time, uh, take it. Whatever your meditation may be, it could be rapping, it could be cooking, it could be, you know, meditation is time by yourself, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and to listen to yourself. So even if it's a walk, you know, that's, that, would be, that would be my advice because my, my, my best uh, joints have come from uh, my dreams. I cut my locks for my dreams. I changed my name for my dreams. I, I, I picked the, the, the name of my first band for my dream. Like these things happen and it's because I'm listening. You know what I'm saying? And like Dama said, you're walking in that energy. If you're listening, blessings on blessings. You have to uh, be abundant to be abundant. You know? So is that. Okay. <laughs> Yo, I, cut, I dyed my hair blonde from my dream. Straight yeah. up. Wow. Straight up. Yeah, I'm really okay. Tell love me. that. Love, love that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> love that. Self care all the way. I'm for that. Rise, if you could finish yeah. it off. Yeah, I can definitely uh, relate to everything you're saying, Corey. And uh, yeah, for me, it's the same. You know, I've been spending a lot of time with my kids and, uh, you know, gardening a lot. I got this crazy little garden going on. <laughs> so yeah, but, uh, you know, in terms of my accomplishments, I mean, I did produce about a dozen full length shows there with the band and that's been going really well. Uh, you know, some licenses, some pretty big licenses that came in as well. Um, so three licenses to movies in the last uh, last six months and that's basically been you know uh, you know a real a lifeline in terms of uh, the financial aspect but I, I agree with you Corey I think it's just all about you know you got to go with the flow you know it is what it is and uh, you just got to do the best that you can so yes I yeah. I love that thank you for finishing off us off like that this is bringing us to the end of this panel but before we sign off I would like if you all can drop your handle, drop how we how people are supposed to connect to you. Where are we supposed to find you? What's next? You know, where are we, where are we looking? You can find me at LA DeCastro. You can see my name. It's exactly spelled like that. Or you can follow Move Ottawa, M-O-O-V Ottawa. 
for all our online projects and our upcoming battles that will happen later on. And um, I'm also on Earth, like I said. So if you got questions, you want to hit me up for anything, just send mm-hmm. me a message. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Next up. Uh, you can find me, uh, Dama Dama Nils, y'all, on IG. And uh, you can go to eodub.com for any of the EO Dub stuff. And tonight at 7 p.m., we got at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we got the EO Beats Challenge. Follow EO Beats Challenge on Instagram for uh, all of that news. And eodub.com slash watch to watch any of our content. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'll go since this just popped up. Bing bong, 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 bing bong, bong, bong. Uh, oh, bing bong, 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 bong. Yeah, that's that's the YouTube. Uh, you can find me at, at, at Corey James Gray on on IG. Um, thank you, thank you for for having me. It's 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 dope to be on a on a panel with with um with artists that are like doing it. You know what I'm saying? And doing it not just for themselves. That's 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 very dope. Or or doing it for themselves, but it just helps people. Shouts to you, Donald. Uh, cause that's, that's me. I'm like, I do freestyle Mondays cause I love freestyle. Uh, and you can, uh, freestyle Mondays.com, Corey James Gray.com. Go to each, any one of those catch a vibe. You have a question for me. You want to build, uh, you want to teach me something or learn something, reach out. Nice for me. It's rise ashen on all the platforms there. So R I S E A S H E N. And, uh, yeah, look me up on YouTube or, facebook or insta and uh, keep in touch friend me let's keep in touch let's build yes we got a community going on right here we got to keep building because this is what's going to sustain us from here on forth so i want to thank all of you for joining this has been a great panel getting to learn more about you and your arts practice taking it online we are innovating the scene so i really want to thank you for taking part in this panel thank you to house of paint um for this knowledge conference and i wish you all the best from here on forth Thanks. Blessings. So far, Blessings. Diego. Sorry? What is, what is it? Give us your socials. Oh, me. You know what it is. My name is Hidda Basile. It's H-T-B-S-L-E. On all platforms, you'll find me there. Liz Clark. That's me. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for participating in this panel. Hopefully, uh, you all have an awesome rest of your day. And thank you to everyone who tuned in on Facebook Live and on Zoom. And hopefully we'll see you all over the next three days at some of the rest of our panels. Uh, Our last one of the day is at 5 p.m. And it is with uh, Cranium Festival. And we're talking with a bunch of DJs about working during COVID and what they can look forward to doing after. So please join us. And uh, Hidda Basile, Corey James Gray, Dama Nils, Alea, Rise, thank you all so much. We're so lucky to have you. Um, have an awesome day. Thanks for having us. Appreciate Peace. It. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye.